time of the gentleman has expired and the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Paul. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, I'd ask uh, unanimous consent to submit a uh, written statement for the record. Mr. Chairman, um, I, I want to submit several questions uh, to the panel, and there won't be enough time to answer these, but I want these questions to be on the record. First, I would like to ask, why should the American people continue to support a war that was justified by false information? Since Saddam Hussein never aggressed against the United States, Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11, and Iraq had no weapons of mass destruction. It is said that uh, one must continue the war because we have already sacrificed so much but uh, what is moral about demanding even more needless sacrifice of American lives merely to save face for the mistake of invading and occupying Iraq? Doesn't it seem awfully strange that the Iraqi government we support is an ally of the Iranians who are, are, uh, who are declared enemies? Are we not now supporting the Iranians by propping up their allies in Iraq? If Maliki is our ally and he has diplomatic relations with Ahmadinejad, why can't we? Why must we continue to provoke Iran just looking for an excuse to bomb that country? Does our policy in Iraq not guarantee chaos in this region for years to come? It is estimated that up to 2,000 Iraqi soldiers refuse to fight against al sadrs militia. Why should we not expect many of the 80,000 Sunnis we have recently armed to someday turn their weapons against us, since they, as well as the Mahdi army, detest any and all foreign occupation? Is it not true that our ally Maliki broke the, uh, de declared and by al the, the uh, ceasefire declared by al-Sadr by initiating the recent violence? Is it not true that the current ceasefire was brokered by the Iranians who also condemned the attacks on the green zone? How can we blame all the violence on the Iranians? Is it not true that with the recent surge in violence in Iraq that the March attacks are now back at the same level as they were in 2005? Does Iran not have a greater justification to be involved in a neighboring, in neighboring Iraq than we do since it's 6,000 miles from our shores. If China or Russia were occupying Mexico, how would we react? Since no one can define winning the war, just who do we expect to surrender? Does this not mean that this war will be endless since our political leaders will not end it? That is, until we go broke, and maybe that's not far off. I do have one question, even though there's not enough time to get all those questions answered. I do have one question I do believe there's enough time to answer, um, probably rather uh, briefly. And then uh, in your estimation, does the administration have the authority to bomb Iran without further congressional approval? Uh, Congressman, I, I'm the commander for Iraq, and I, had, I do not know uh, the answer to that question, and it's not within my purview. Uh, uh, Congressman, no, nor is it in mine. Uh, uh, I, uh, you know, my my job is Iraq. I, I'm, I'm just not competent to uh, to pronounce on an issue like that. Well, it, it just seems to me that we couldn't get an answer like no. It seems pretty obvious that under our Constitution, that's the way it works. That we're supposed to confer with the Congress and it would be spreading the war. We know what kind of the, how the war spread in Vietnam without congressional approval and what that led to. So it seems to me that it's to not say uh, uh, no, the administration does not have authority to bomb another country without getting authority from the Congress. So it disturbs me to no end that we can't get a flat out no on this question. And I yield back the balance of my time. The time of the gentleman has expired. His entire remarks will be put on our part of the record. And the uh, gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. Della. Yes, Ambassador Crocker.